Hey everybody, it's George Widom reporting for Widom's World. Well, it's been a long time since I've done a regular Widom's World spot where I've answered questions. Sorry it's taken me so long, but I'm back. Let's get right into it. First one from way back in October of 2014 comes from Nicoletta Mandalini. I have a Nova M Audio Classic FET, and my friend, who is an engineer, told me that there is sibilance in my S's. I would like to have a sound much like the one I get when I'm recording at a professional sound studio without spending a fortune on a Neumann. What type of mic do you recommend? Well, it's a question that I can't answer because I haven't heard a recording of your voice on your mic and in your studio. Without hearing your voice on your mic in your studio, I can't judge where the issues are, what deficiencies you have in your sound, and thereby I can't recommend another microphone to you. There are some mics that are known to be less sibilant maybe. Maybe they have flatter responses such as the MXL CR89. That one is known to have a very flat response. The AKG C2000, Audio-Technica AT4047. Even the 4040 is relatively smooth. Um, So those are just a couple that you could check into. But without actually hearing your sound, I can't tell you how severe the problem is. Because sometimes I can fix it very easily just with a movement of the mic, adjustment of the placement, or just a tweak to an equalizer curve. So send it on in if you'd like me to take a listen to it. Go to vostudiotech.com and click on the sound check button up at the top of the window. David Banal says... I have learned from you how to use the graphic equalizer audio unit through Twisted Wave, and I have seen how you have tweaked the settings to listen and remove noise from recording. I was wondering what tool you use or can recommend to view in real time through Twisted Wave a true frequency representation of a recording. Is there any way to accomplish this within Twisted Wave without having to perform a frequency analysis outside of Twisted Wave? Thank you, David. So you need a frequency analysis plugin for Twisted Wave. And yeah, those certainly exist. Here's one from, I found from a company called Blue Cat Audio. It's called Blue Cat's Freak Analyst, and it's for audio units and actually all sorts of different versions, RTAS, Windows, Mac, VST, you name it. It probably runs on your DAW and in your computer's uh, OS. So all you have to do is install that, run the installer, follow the instructions. Once you've got it running, once you have audio recorded in Twisted Wave, just go to Effects, go to your audio units, look for Blue Cat, load up the uh, Frequency and an- Analyst, which would be Mono, and you get this window. Now I'll play back your audio. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there you have it, Frequency Analysis. Pretty detailed analysis too. It's got a really nice looking design. There you go. It is definitely possible. Here's one from Sean Tool. Hi, George. I have another topic I'd like to know more about. Which mic stands? Sean Tool. He's sent in questions before. Hi again, George. I have another topic I'd like to know more about. Which mic stands are suitable for a home studio or booth, especially a small one like mine in a 4x6 closet? In addition, some of the mics I'm considering have shock mounts. Is there a stand that best accommodates these? You got it, buddy. If you're on a budget, the Heil Sound HB1 for $69.99 is a great one. Sturdy. It will hold just about any microphone out there. Tube, shotgun, I don't care what. It'll hold it. And I love using their wall mount, the WM1, to hold the mic up. Get it off the desk. Don't mount it to the floor. Don't have a stand. You don't need any of that stuff. Mount the arm right to the wall. If you want a little bit more substantial, maybe a little bit better looking mic arm, then you can check out their PL. 2T overhead broadcast boom. Some people prefer this because the springs are internal. There's no external springs to be seen. And occasionally springs can ring when you bump into the mic arm. So this will accommodate any mic shotgun or not, uh, shock mount or not, and it'll work great for you. Miranda writes, I've been enjoying watching Widom's World and have a question regarding recording on the iPad. I'm interested in using the iPad for recording for noise reasons, because it has no fan or anything. I've got Twisted Wave app on the iPad and currently just Audacity on the PC for editing. How realistic is it to be using the Apogee mic on the iPad for voiceover? Quite realistic, actually. 
as long as you're not interested in monitoring your own audio because the Apogee mic has no headphone monitoring, it sounds quite good. It's all about mic technique. It's a low noise mic. It's sensitive. As long as you place it correctly and you have proper room acoustics, you'll get exceptionally good results from the Apogee mic. Um, it just takes a little bit of practice to get good sound. But just like any good condenser mic, there's a little bit of experimentation to get it set up just right. But yes, you can absolutely use the Apogee mic and get professional audio recording results. Jorge asks, I was setting up Time Machine for the first time on my iMac, and then the question came out. If a Time Machine backup task is running in the background while I'm recording in Adobe Audition or Twisted Wave, could this damage the audio, causing dropouts, clicks, or etc.? Yeah, it could. Um, I have not found it to be a problem in the last few years on the Macs that I'm using. I leave Time Machine running all the time, and I record and edit in Twisted Wave, and it's never caused clicks and pops for me. Um, however, if you do run into problems and you're afraid that Time Machine is going to interfere, you could install a little app that allows you to set a Time Machine schedule so it only runs when you want it to run. So here's an example of one of those. Just go into your app store and look for an app called Backup Scheduler for Time Machine. It's $4.99 and it'll allow you to schedule the times that your Time Machine backups are allowed to happen. So just set them for after hours when you're not working. Um, first thing in the morning, or just set it to manually and just turn it on when you want to. But I do recommend using a scheduler if you're going to put it on manual mode, because chances are you're going to forget and you're going to lose data if the thing crashes and you don't have a recent backup. So check out Backup Scheduler if you're concerned about dropouts in the audio. Here's one from Thomas Norton. The context of my question is this. Though many plugins exist to DS, debreath, declick, etc., I noticed that ACX asks its readers only to normalize, EQ, and compress. They say that DSing, debreathing, and declicking, and other such plugins actually create more audio problems than they solve, at least for their audiobooks. My questions are what are the essential plugins and presets one should apply when recording an audition or other basic file? And two, at what point does a recording cease to qualify as dry? The number one part is a long answer because it depends specifically on your needs, what sound issues you're dealing with, what results you're looking to get, and that kind of stuff. I generally will only use a couple of plugins, a high pass filter. I will use a dynamics plugin that has compression and downward expansion. I'll use an EQ and I'll use a limiter. And that's it. That's pretty much what I use. The only time I'd use a declicker is if somebody has a severe clicking issue. The only time I'd use a de is if somebody has a severe s issue. I usually try to fix these problems at the source by showing people proper mic technique, helping them improve the sound of their voice or their, or their vocal quality, that kind of thing. Um, when it comes to being a recording that's dry versus wet, um, usually when they say they want to dry, it means they want no dynamic tools applied to it. No compression, no expansion, no gating no DSing, things like that. However, I do find that a little bit of EQ can be very helpful, um, especially a high-pass filter. So I almost always will still send audio with a high-pass filter applied to the audio. If it's solving a problem for you, removing rumble, why send them audio with the rumble and it? Just send it to them with the rumble removed by using your high-pass filter. So that's what I basically recommend to folks. Even when they say dry, an EQ is often okay as long as it's been set up correctly. And the last one for this rapid round of short answers, Grant says, I'm a beginner in audio production and voiceover. I recently set up a home studio and I'm using Audacity as my DAW. I have an audio interface with built-in mic preamps that connect to my condenser mic. My question to you is, do I need to keep the input levels high in Audacity and low on my preamp or low in Audacity and high on the preamp? Thanks, George, for the help. That depends a lot on the Mac OS or the Windows OS that you're using. I find on the Mac OS, leave the microphone slider on Audacity all the way up and turn up the gain on the mic preamp accordingly to set the right levels. However, on Windows 7, I find it to be the exact opposite. I find that you need to set the input gain in Audacity very low, maybe 10%, and turn up the gain on your audio interface to get the best results. Why that is, I'm not exactly sure. Something about the way the Windows sound drivers interact with uh, outside devices. 
but that tends to give you the best signal to noise ratio. Just turn down the audacity gain on Windows 7 and you'll probably be in good shape. So I hope those were helpful and uh, sorry some of you waited a very long time for those answers. We've had a lot of conventions this year and I've had a lot to cover. Thanks again for sending in your questions. If you'd like to have your questions answered on a future Widom's World, please do send it in to widomsworld at edgestudio.com and I'll get to it as soon as I can. If you would like to have some one-on-one -on -one tech support or get a Twisted Wave stack or any number of interesting services that I provide, go over to vostudiotech.com. You can also call our head office in New York and talk to one of our sales reps. That's at 212-868-EDGE. Thanks again. This is George Whittem reporting for Whittem's World. See you guys next week.